Welcome to video lecture V1B. In the last lecture, I introduced the basic assumptions about our communications channel. And in particular, we studied the q -Ary symmetric channel. I also introduced the notions of information rate of a code and its distance. In this lecture, I'll present the decoding strategies that we use for error detection and for error correction throughout the course. These are IMLD and CMLD. I'll explain that these decoding strategies are not ideal. However, I'll justify why they are reasonable in practice. Let me remind you of the notation we saw in the last video lecture. So here's a toy example of a code C with four code words, each of length five, with the underlying alphabet being the binary alphabet. So C is a 5-4 block code over the binary alphabet. The rate of C is 2 fifths, and C has distance 2. Now, if a code such as C is used for error detection only, then the decoding strategy is a natural one. Namely, the received word R is accepted if and only if R is a code word. This makes sense, because remember, only code words are transmitted. And so if a received word is not a code word, then it should be rejected. What's more interesting is if the code is used for error correction. So let's see, be an arbitrary NM block code over an alphabet A. And suppose that C has distance D. Suppose that a code with C is transmitted and R is a received word. Remember, by one of our channel assumptions, the channel does not delete any symbols, and so the received word R has the same length N as a transmitted code word. So the channel decoder now must decide one of the following. First, it could conclude that no errors have occurred, and it accepts R as a transmitted code word. Secondly, it could conclude that errors have occurred, and now it tries to correct or decode R to some code word C. The question then is which code word C should R be decoded to? I should point out that the terminology here is a bit confusing, namely the use of the word correct. Error correction does not guarantee that the decoder always makes the correct decision. For example, suppose that the transmitted code word is a zero code word. And suppose that during transmission, the first three bits are flipped. So the received word R is 11100. This R is a valid code word. And so the channel decoder might reasonably conclude that R was in fact the transmitted code word. And this would be the incorrect decision since the transmitted code word was a zero code word. So error correction does not guarantee that the channel decoder always makes the correct decision. The third conclusion that the decoder could make is that errors have occurred, but error correction is not possible. The natural decoding strategy to use is the one we used in the very first lecture when we took a brief look at binary replication codes. That was the nearest neighbor decoding strategy. This strategy comes in two flavors. The first is incomplete maximum likelihood decoding, or IMLD. IMLD is the following strategy. If there is a unique code word C, such that the distance between R and C is a minimum, then the channel decoder corrects R to C. If no such code with C exists, then the channel decoder reports that errors have occurred, but correction is not possible. In this event, the application 
might ask for a retransmission of that code word, or it might disregard that information. If retransmission is not possible, the second flavor of nearest neighbor decoding is complete maximum likelihood decoding, or CMLD. CMLD is similar to IMLD, except that if there are two or more code words which minimize the distance between R and C, then the channel decoder corrects R to an arbitrary one of these code words. I'll next justify that IMLD and also CMLD are reasonable decoding strategies. We'll prove the following theorem. IMLD chooses the code with C, for which the conditional probability P of R given C, which is defined to be the probability that R is received given that C is transmitted, is the largest. Let's prove this theorem. Suppose that C1 and C2 are two code words. Let D1 be the distance between C1 and R, and D2 the distance between C2 and R. Without loss of generality, suppose that D1 is greater than D2. What we would like to prove is that the probability that R is received, given that C1 is transmitted, is less than the probability that R is received, given that C2 is transmitted. In other words, the code with C2 that is closer to R than C1 yields a larger conditional probability than the one for C1. So establishing this inequality would prove the theorem. So let's compute these two conditional probabilities. First, the probability that R is received given that C1 is transmitted is given by this expression. To see this, note that R and C1 agree in n minus D1 positions. So the probability that the symbols in these n minus D1 positions are transmitted correctly is 1 minus p to the power n minus d1. I'll remind you that p is a symbol error probability, and so the probability that a particular symbol is transmitted correctly is 1 minus p. Also, r and c1 differ in d1 positions, and so the probability that the symbols in these d1 positions are transmitted incorrectly to particular symbols in the alphabet is p over q minus 1 to the power d1. The probability p over q minus 1 comes from the assumption that the channel is a q-symmetric channel. Similarly, the probability of r given c2 is given by this expression. Now the ratio of these two probabilities can be seen to be 1 minus p to the power d2 minus d1 times p over q minus 1 to the power d1 minus d2. And rearranging terms gives us p over 1 minus p times q minus 1 to the power d1 minus d2. Now the quantity in the parentheses, namely p over 1 minus p times q minus 1, is less than 1 if and only if p is less than 1 minus p times q minus 1. I got the second inequality by multiplying both sides of the first inequality by 1 minus p times q minus 1. The inequality sign doesn't change because 1 minus p times q minus 1 is positive, and that's because p is less than 1 and q is at least 2. Multiplying out 1 minus p times q minus 1 gives us an equivalent inequality p less than q minus pq minus 1 plus p. Canceling the p's and rearranging terms gives us this equivalent inequality. Dividing both sides by q gives us the equivalent inequality p less than q minus 1 over q. Now this inequality is satisfied because this is the assumption we made about Q-symmetric channels.
So in fact, p over 1 minus p times q minus 1 is indeed less than 1. And since the exponent is greater than 1, this ratio of probabilities is less than 1. And so we've shown that the probability of r given c1 is less than the probability of r given c2. And this proves our theorem. So to recap, IMLD and CMLD maximize the conditional probability that R is received given that C is transmitted. But this is not the ideal strategy, which is what I call minimum error probability decoding, or MED. MED is the following strategy. The channel decoder should correct the received word R to a code word C which maximizes the conditional probability C given R, which is defined to be the probability that C is transmitted given that R is received. This is ideal because from the channel decoder's point of view, it knows that R is in fact received, and it's trying to decode R to the code word which was most likely to have been sent, again, given that R is received. And that's maximizing this conditional probability, whereas IMLD and CMLD maximize this conditional probability. These conditional probabilities are, in general, not the same. So in general, IMLD is not the same as MED. Let me illustrate this point with an example. So here we have a toy example of a code with two code words I'm calling C1 and C2. Suppose that the probability of C1 being transmitted is 0 0.1, and the probability that C2 is transmitted is 0 0.9. These probabilities come from the distribution of source messages. Suppose also that the symbol error probability for our binary symmetric channel is 0 0.25. Now, suppose that r equals 1, 0, 0 is received. The channel decoder, using the MED decoding strategy, computes the two conditional probabilities of C1 given r and C2 given r. These probabilities can be computed using Bayes' theorem, which you saw in STAT 230. If you haven't taken STAT 230, here is Bayes' theorem. It states that the probability of two events A and B occurring is a probability that A occurs times a conditional probability that B occurs given that A has occurred. By symmetry, this also equals the probability that B occurs times the conditional probability that A occurs given that B has occurred. And so Bayes' theorem can be used to relate the two conditional probabilities, b given a and a given b, to each other. So by Bayes' theorem, the probability of c1 given r is the probability of r given c1 times the probability that c1 is transmitted divided by the probability that r is received. The probability r given c1 can be easily computed because if C1 is transmitted and R is received, it means that the first symbol was transmitted incorrectly, which happens with probability P, while the second and third symbols were transmitted correctly, which happens with probability 1 minus P squared. By assumption, P of C1 is 0 0.1, and I've left P of R unevaluated. So the conditional probability of C1 given R is 9 over 640 times 1 over PR. Similarly, the probability of C2 given R is 27 over 640 times 1 over PR. Since the second probability is greater than the first, MED decodes R to C2. On the other hand, IMLD decodes R to C1, 
because the distance between C1 and R is 1, while the distance between C2 and R is 2. So we see that MED and IMLD make different decoding decisions in this example. To recap, IMLD maximizes the conditional probability that R is received given that C is transmitted, whereas MED maximizes the conditional probability that C is transmitted given that R is received. MED is the ideal strategy, whereas IMLD is in general not ideal, because in general, IMLD is different from MED. The bad news is that MED has a serious drawback. Namely, the decoding algorithm depends on the probability distribution of source messages. Now, in general, one cannot say anything meaningful about the probability distribution of source messages. For example, if the source messages were, say, audio files, the audio file would be broken up into blocks of a fixed length, perhaps 128 bits, and each 128-bit source message would be encoded using the code. Now, one cannot say anything meaningful in general about the probability distribution of 128-bit blocks of an audio file. So because of this, MED cannot be used in practice, even though it is the ideal decoding strategy. The good news is that if all source messages are equally likely, then CMLD and MED are identical. To see this, note that the probability of CI given R is the probability of R given CI times the probability that CI is transmitted divided by the probability that R is received. I get this from Bayes' theorem. Now the number M of code words is the same as the number of source messages. Since source messages are equally likely, the probability that CI is transmitted is 1 over M. And so the two conditional probabilities are different by a quantity which doesn't depend on the transmitted code word. Hence, maximizing the first conditional probability, which is what MED does, is the same as maximizing the second conditional probability, which is what IMLD and CMLD do. Therefore, if all source messages are equally likely, then CMLD is equivalent to MED, which is good news. In practice, we use IMLD or CMLD. And this is an ideal strategy as long as we make the simplifying assumption that source messages are all equally likely. In video lecture V1C, we'll determine the error detecting capability and the error correcting capability of a code. We'll see that these capabilities can be described very concisely in terms of the distance of the code. We'll also see how the existence of codes with certain parameters can be phrased as a sphere packing problem that is widely studied in some branches of combinatorics. Goodbye.